Hello everyone and welcome to the first game we'll be showing from round 3 of this year's FIDE Chess Olympiad and the first one featuring the highest rated player in the world, Magnus Carlsen. He's playing against um, uh, Roberto Garcia Pantoja of Colombia on board 1 and uh, Magnus almost did not arrive for this game. As the story goes, he mentioned it after the game was played. Uh, uh, his team was supposed to pick him up, but then they called him and they said that uh, there was too much traffic, they're just not going to make it, and that he will have to uh, find a way to uh, make it on his own. And he's staying at another hotel. He's not staying at the hotel where everyone else is staying, uh, where the uh, Olympiad is being played for some reason. I don't know what that reason is. Uh, so, of course, uh, it, it takes him longer to um, uh, reach the playing hall. And the problem is, uh, he, as he says so himself, is terrible at navigating. So, uh, the, the the round started a little late and uh, he didn't have to forfeit the, the, the game. Uh, he arrived just in time and this is the game. So, let's check it out. Uh, Roberto Garcia Pantoja with white opens with pawn to e4. Uh, we have pawn to c5 by Magnus, knight to f3, pawn to e6, and now pawn to d4. Uh, captures, we have knight, captures, and pawn to a6. Magnus goes for the Khan variation of the Sicilian. Pawn to c4, uh, Roberto goes for the Marozzi bind structure against the Khan. Knight to f6, we have knight to c3, and queen to c7. Uh, we have bishop to e2, and pawn to b6, preparing to Fianchetto the light square bishop. We have castles and uh, Fianchetto in the light square bishop. We have pawn to f3, uh, and knight to c6. We have knight captures on c6, bishop captures, and now there are a couple of games that reach this position. For example, bishop to e3 is a known move, but after queen to d3, it is now as of move 11 that we have a completely new game. So let's see how Magnus uh, handles this. He strikes with pawn to h5. And uh, interestingly, aside from this pawn to h5 move, every move that Magnus played this game is uh, either first or second or top move or, or third move recommended by the engine. Uh, even though h5 is also perfectly fine, it's not amongst the, the, the top three. Uh, we have bishop to e3, bishop to d6, now putting pressure on the h2 pawn, and pawn to f4. Uh, defending, but also weakening the uh, e4 square a little bit and also preparing e5 to win material but also weakening the the g4 square uh, knight to g4 attacking the bishop and now pawn to e5 uh, the cold-blooded bishop captures h captures is probably best but you know giving uh, magnus the um, uh, the semi-open h file with the two bishops staring at that white king doesn't look like something you want to do even a3 with b4 next is the way white should play uh, but okay after knight g4 we have pawn to e5 chasing away magnus's bishop bishop to e7 and now bishop to d4 getting the bishop out of harm's way and also nicely controlling that um, uh, knight on g4 we have pawn to d6 magnus strikes in the center uh, and now uh, it took uh, uh, Roberto Garcia uh, 40 minutes, maybe 39, 40, 40 minutes, 39 uh, for his next move. And he plays E captures on D6. Uh, it is the top move recommended by the engine, but he took quite a lot of time uh, to calculate it. And now he's down to 34 minutes. Magnus replies with Bishop captures on D6. And now we have Bishop to F3. Another 15 minutes for this move. And now he's down already to 19 minutes, offering a trade of Bishops. Probably, again, uh, capturing here is better with something like queen to e3, defending the pawn. But, I mean, it just looks so weird. Why would you give black the, the, the semi-open h file, especially if the player with the black pieces is Magnus Carlsen? So, okay, bishop to f3, offering a trade of bishops. Magnus obliges, bishop captures, queen captures, now putting pressure on the rook. And Magnus just castles kingside. Uh, we have knight to e4, putting pressure on the bishop once again, and uh, offering the c4 pawn. And this is probably uh, due to time trouble, wanting to play exciting chess, wanting to trick Magnus a little bit. Better would be just to defend uh, the pawn on c4. And when I say better, I mean the engine suggested, of course, as humans, we, are, we tend to go for the more interesting option. And it is interesting to sacrifice pawns. So knight to e4, uh, giving up the c4 pawn, and Magnus captures it. Queen captures on c4. And if you're not uh, sure about uh, giving up a pawn against Magnus, it's probably not going to work out. Uh, we have rook a to d1, uh, and now bishop back to e7. You could also, of course, capture the bishop, but if you capture the bishop, Magnus just captures on d4 with check, and then you also lose the knight on d6. So that's why rook a to d1, and bishop back to e7. Now nicely controlling the knight on e4. 
uh, we have pawn to b3, queen b4, and not, oh, sorry, not queen b4, queen to b5, and pawn to a4, chasing away the queen. Queen to b4 by Magnus, uh, and now pawn to h3, kicking away the knight, knight h6, and bishop to c3. Again, you could consider some other moves like bishop to f2, moving the bishop, maybe knight to g5, going after the attack um, somehow right away. But uh, uh, Roberto decides to sacrifice another pawn to Magnus. He offers the b3 pawn, and uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's definitely weird if you, if you don't capture it. So he captures it, queen captures on b3, and now rook to d7. Uh, you could also maybe capture on h5, but now uh, after queen captures on b3, if you capture on h5, you're not really threatening anything, and after something like rook 8 to c8, it's just a very, very strong um, uh, position for black. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, it's hard to say. Uh, the reason maybe uh, is bishop to f6. Bishop to f6, and now you can't really do whatever, but you can play g captures on f6, and after queen captures on h6, now queen to e3 with check, and uh, okay, the knight now has to move. If you don't want to move the knight, so you don't have to worry about any knight captures on f6 action. And after something like rook to c4, you are uh, dominating the game. So uh, that's probably why queen captures on h5 wasn't played amongst other things. So rook to d7 going after the bishop uh, and knight to f5, defending the bishop this way. And you might be thinking, but isn't this a great opportunity to just kick away the defender of this bishop? Well, yes, it is, but and it even is the top move recommended by the engine. But if you play it, then knight h4 comes with an attack on the queen, so you're not going to be uh, in time to to do anything about the bishop. And uh, if you play something like queen to g3 to go after the knight, it doesn't really work. Queen captures on a4, goes after the rook, and now after you play rook captures on e7 to remove the defender of the knight, first queen captures on e4, and again, black is just. Um, not much better. Black is just uh, winning. There's uh, a, a hardly a move you can make here that that's any good. If queen captures on h4, queen e3 check picks up the bishop, and again, uh, not uh, not the best. Uh, and the, the the white king is wide in the open. And uh, okay, you do have some pawns in front of the the black king, but nothing serious. Uh, just the rook d8, and then the rook comes into the attack. Uh, it will be over uh, swiftly. So after knight f5, rook f to d1, and now rook a to d8. Magnus just offers a, a trade of rooks. Both rooks would be great as he's up two pawns, and he is already looking at that a4 pawn. We have pawn to g4, knight to h4, and now queen to e2. We have queen captures on a4. Other moves can also be considered, uh, but Magnus says, okay, I'm just gonna grab the third pawn as well. Why not? Uh, we have rook 1 to d4, and now queen to a3. We have king to h2, and now rook captures on d7. Rook captures, and rook to d8. Magnus offers a trade of the other pair of rooks, as the bishop on e7 is nicely defended by the queen. Uh, so rook to a7, and now h captures on g4. h captures, knight to g6, going after that f4 pawn, and pawn to f5. Uh, again, you can't capture on a6 but if rook captures on a6 the queen comes to c1 and again it's not the the best the f4 pawn is being attacked the knight is still stuck here uh, uh, as the bishop would hang you also have to worry about uh, rook to d2 if the uh, if, if you move the knight and bishop so there's no move that you can play here with with white it's just that bad of a position so after knight to g6 we have pawn to f5 uh, and now bishop to d6 with check. Uh, we have king to g1. You could also play knight captures on d6, but uh, that's kind of the reason Magnus is playing bishop to d6 check. If you play knight captures on d6, queen captures on d6 with check, king to h1, and now queen to c6 with check. King to g2, uh, uh, sorry, queen to g2 blocking, and now queen captures on c3. F captures on g6, and now just queen to e1 with check, with uh, if king to h2, then rook to d2 wins the game, and if you block with the queen, then queen to h for check, well, let's say king to g2, you're gonna capture here with check, and after king f2, uh, the rook always finds a way into the game, something like king to e3, you're gonna play uh, rook to e2 check, and now, uh, how do you call it, the, the the ladder checkmate, or I don't know what, what the, the name is, but I think it's the ladder checkmate. So after bishop to d6 check, king to g1, 
one was played, now comes queen to c1 with check, queen to e1 blocking, and bishop to c5 with check. Trying to give up the bishop on c5 uh, to get the knight out of the out of the action, but if knight captures, of course, just rook to d1, and, uh, okay, uh, pointless would be to continue this. So king to g2, and now knight to h4 with check. We have queen captures on h4, and now queen to g1 with check. Uh, yes, uh, Roberto is uh, less than a minute on the clock, but that's the least of his uh, concern. So king to f3, we have rook to d3 with check, and now, okay, if you go up the board, it's uh, it's a bit of a different checkmate, queen e3, king e5, and rook to d5 check. He went down the board, king to e2, and now Magnus delivered a very nice queen to d1 checkmate uh, so yeah, uh, from uh, from a game that uh, Magnus uh, almost did not arrive to, and uh, he he was almost late, he almost lost by uh, forfeiting the game. Uh, he was able to win a very nice game. His opponent played a very very strong chess, but then he decided to sacrifice that c4 pawn. Magnus captured it. Then he sacrificed another pawn. Magnus again captured it very gladly, and then the third pawn, and there was just uh, nothing there, which is often the case when you face uh, a player as strong as Magnus Carlsen. And I don't think. I've shown you uh, a photo. This is a photo by Maria Milianova, a photo chess uh, as, as she is the official photographer of the of the Olympiad. This is Magnus Carlsen arriving. Uh, she took a, this uh, nice photo of him, and uh, yeah, I mean, look at this. This is how Magnus arrives uh, at the at the playing hall because he's for some reason at a different hotel. And uh, yeah, like he said, he, he's terrible at navigating, so he had to uh, ride the bike really, really fast in order to uh, try and arrive on time while also navigating. Uh, so yeah, uh, big congratulations to him on this achievement. I think this was much harder for him than actually playing this game. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. First game that we are showing from Magnus from the uh, 45th FIDE Chess Olympiad, as it is the first one that he's playing for Team Norway. Uh, I would like to thank Joseph Treat, GersneyChessFestival.org.gg, Dr. Kaplan Collins, uh, Professor Hexagon, and William Gould for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions. Uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.